Mm. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Unstoppable Faith Tribe. We're having our weekly um, mastermind. Um, I have with me in the room Henrietta for Yun. So Henrietta for Yun, if you haven't watched one of our previous episodes, she's an up. Uh, well, she's an artist now for many years, but she is finding her feet in the online space to, um, you know, to sell her paintings and also sell her expertise as artist um, online. And if you haven't met me before, I'm Yona the Toy, coach and mentor, and I run the Unstoppable Faithfulness Tribe as well as the Unstoppable Faithfulness Tribe um, podcast on YouTube. And um, I uh, teach Christian women to sell their expertise um, using Facebook groups. So, yeah. Today's topic is all about uh, finding yourself again, part three. So if you haven't tuned in for the previous two weeks, we've done part one and part two of the finding yourself again. So this was originally um, designed as a pop-up training um, and I presented it for uh, as a pop-up training for about two or three years. And um, I no longer do this pop-up training, but I decided to share it with you again in the format of my podcast and on this mastermind so that you can get the value from it and so that I preserve it for um, the coming generations and for my children and and whatever. So um, the information is not lost. So um, Henrietta has been with me through many of these. Um, and she, um, I think by this, by now, Henrietta, you can, you can um, give the presentation because you know the information by heart. But um, still... <laughs> So it keeps being valuable and it's information that you can go through over and over um, and it just deepens your understanding. It's like peeling an onion and it's just um, every time you ask yourself these questions, it just get, gives you a deeper understanding of yourself. So before we really get started, I just want to open for us in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to be here on this group tonight um, and to present this information to the ladies that are going to be watching and watching on replay. Lord Jesus, I pray that the seed that we sow tonight may, may grow in people's hearts and minds and that we will open up strongholds and things that has held people back for many years. Um, in terms of finding themselves again, in terms of knowing what they were created for and what they're capable of. And I pray that you will open up new avenues, new vision, new purpose for the ladies watching in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. So um, talking about revision, Henrietta, have you done your day one, uh, the story, the past, present and future and day two's top 10 values yet? Yes. Mm. Okay. Perfect. And for those of you watching on the replay, <clears throat> just go watch day one. I forgot to to actually share the the um how to do the story, but it is in the beginning of um part two, and then um at the end of part two we have the uh, top ten values um exercise, and tonight we're doing I think the vision. So um, just find yourself a notebook or a notepad um, and then just uh, do that exercise. When I normally, when I do it in a pop-up training format, I, I ask you to submit it um, in the group and you're welcome to submit it on the Unstoppable Faith in a Tribe group. Um, but um, normally yeah, we're doing it in a closed Facebook group and we can share, you know, vulnerability. And this is a public Facebook group. So just keep that in mind, um, but you're welcome to share if you would want to. Um, but um what have you learned about yourself this time around, Henrietta, about your story and about your top 10 values? Oh, it doesn't change a lot. Um, but it's getting clearer and uh, yeah, I know more what I want and um, my goals also. And the past, I can reflect on the past. I can see where I've grown and I've, I've, I can see what was important in my past for, for today. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, uh, Christian uh, upbringing of us uh, siblings, um, our, our, my love for art, um, not pursuing it for lots of years, but at a later stage. And what I've learned out of that and, and um, 
I was a police officer for many years and how that disciplined me and also influenced me in my life. And uh, and I love studying and, and how the, that influenced me uh, positively. So um, that was my past and, and, and the present, all of that I've got a is um uh, I've got I've got uh, I've got a good knowledge of art. I know people. I I I understand people. I can judge them, or how do I put it? I can see into them quickly and see who they uh, what are they up to. I think it's my police discipline, <laughs> so I know uh, people. And I'm also, I know now I'm also a devoted Christian and love Bible study, going to church. I'm happily married. And and uh, I love my, my family, my children, my grandchildren. And I found out about myself that I love to teach. I uh, love to like to help people. Yeah. And you just did. <laughs> so you know um we always find stuff out about ourselves you can even be 60 or 60 plus years out and for the first time find out that you've got a teaching gift um <laughs> but oh, well. we learn about ourselves when we do introspection like this and we do work like this well yeah so yeah, yeah that was the, the present and, and the future is i want to be a bit of artist i want to uh, be a better Christian, uh, my art career to forward that, and my community, and uh, <laughs> well, to get my house clean. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> I, I must minimalize my work, my place. Uh, that's a future. I want to do that. I want to, a garden. I want a small house um, place to live in. And, and, because this is overwhelming and because of my house it's so full of furniture and stuff that it's really overwhelming and I must minimalize everything mm -hmm. to get clearer to get things in my to put some things away and got space for everything because I'm more a hoarder than anything else mm -hmm. and I've got also got a little bit of ADD or ADHD or whatever yeah. and uh, and focusing it will help me focus mm. so i really must do that that's my future and looking also um into my health i've already worked a lot on that and also though well that's one of my big um concerns is to to work on that so that's my future okay so <laughs> and my my values i've looked through the values again i've Okay, I, I want to say that the silver linings in, in life, it's very important to me. What is my silver linings? You've, you've just go over that very quickly, but I think that's a very important thing, mm. the silver linings. What is the silver linings in your life? Mm. And my Christianity is, is a silver lining. My art is a silver lining. My lots of friends and, and the love to help him, that's a silver line. My knowledge, mm. my family, my animals, that that are my silver linings and that's important to me and, and that that drives my day. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and I, I haven't I think that's an impo important thing for people to bring out. Mm. Yeah, and I've <sighs> And what is the, the heart that I choose? That's the next thing that's a further of, and, and also my values that I've looked into. Um, and to to get values better, to to look over it again. And it comes, boils back to, to the same on and at my business, but I didn't weigh them too, too much. So I had to go back and rev revision or revise that again. Yeah. Um, yeah. To really clearly, clearly see my visions, my, my, my values, not my visions, my values. Yeah. yeah. yeah and it's I not think... as easy mm. as you think. <laughs> and, and, and what I always say is this, with this work and with any work that you do, any introspective work, is the deeper the transformation you want, 
the the deeper you should then the more serious you, you should take the exercise because you will always get out exactly what you put into it if you take the weekend off and you re- treat it like a retreat and you really spend time on this and you focus on it mm-hmm. then obviously you'll get more out than when you do it for 10 mm-hmm. minutes after work and you're tired just before you're starting to make dinner um so whatever you put in that's what you're going to get out and and it works that way with everything you do um and and i think the value of redoing it and redoing it it's just um basically gaining mastery in these principles that i'm teaching mm-hmm. and, and really cementing it in your mind and in your heart and in your life principles and in your routines so that it really starts affecting you and when your values starts affecting your daily routine that's where the integration happens that's where the transformation really happens and uh, Andrea can attest to that it doesn't happen the first time you do it because the first time you think eh, whatever and you write a few words and that's it and the second time it's like hmm, but that words uh, I, I want to really find out what the meaning of that word and that's where it starts getting interesting and and the sixth or seventh time you do it when you really know what your values are and you really start making your decisions according to your values and and it becomes the principle you 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 live your life according to that's when the real transformation starts happening when you say i know i'm no longer that person i'm a person who values this and that means i have to say no to you tonight because i value this more than this <laughs> and that's well, where it changes you and i also think hard about the iceberg mm-hmm. um, and and it's the same as a computer program especially an art program where you 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 push things backward and you push things forward mm-hmm. and it's like the iceberg what do you want to push forward in your life what other people wants to see and this week I was very emotional I've got outbursts and simple things and is that the way I want people to see me? Is that my billboard? Mm-hmm. I really have to look at myself, how I'm presenting myself to the world outside and to my friends. And I've list a few of my friends and I'm I'm thinking, what are they, they thinking of, of me? Mm-hmm. And the way I'm treating them, the way I'm talking to them, the way I'm presenting myself to them, the way I'm... I even clothe myself to see them, how I'm presenting myself to them. Mm-hmm. Are they seeing me, see me as this karua woman walking around in my old clothes because it's a karua and it's dirty and it's full of s- small town and it's full of dust and, and you don't care how you look and what are they thinking about you and are you presenting yourself? Yeah. So yeah, I I I I I was thinking and I scratch it underneath it because it's very important and I write the not to be in a, next to them because it's really important to me to go back and think yeah. really hard on that. Yeah, yeah. Something that I can add also to as to the the billboard is when you come to a point where you want to sell your expertise, um, then it's easy just to feel sorry for yourself and say i'm not getting any clients but are you really showing people what you've got Mm. do people really know what you've got and i've struggled with that for many years i said i'm a valuable person why can't people love me why can't people why can't i get clients why can't i whatever you're not showing what's underneath the surface you need to Mm. showcase your stuff Otherwise, people won't know. People won't know what what you've been through. People don't know what you know unless you show them. I mean, uh, a year ago, Henrietta, they had no idea I had had so much knowledge about business. And now a year later, she knows. She knows I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, Mm -hmm. I've spent time. I've developed mastery in my field of expertise, and I can show that. And now I know that we need to show that to the world. If we want to create a business where we want to sell our expertise, people need to know that you're an expert. They're not going to guess it by the way that you dress. You need to create products and services and knowledge things that people can know that. Mm. Um, yes, and I want to further say something some, um, something about that. Like me, I'm an artist, and I can't, I can't be an artist 
or I can't, that's my way of announcing God to the world. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do that, I haven't got the opportunity to show that. I'm in a very small town here in the Karua. It's very small. There's not a lot of people. I don't get connected to a lot of people around here. And I must testify about God's glory and, and everything about God and the beauty of God's work. And, and, and that's the way I can do it to the world, to show them. And there's not a lot of paintings like that. And, and But that's my way to this, to testify of his light. Yeah. So it's, and, and I, I was shy to do that. And I didn't want to do that. But now I'm seeing the urgency to, to start doing it. Because it's not me. Don't uh, don't don't think it's you. Because it's not you. It's it's for mm. God. You yeah. have to work to announce God to other people, and that's the way I'm. I can do it. Yeah, definitely to reflect His glory through the work that you do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. All right. So tonight we are talking about a lot of things. We are talking about what you focus on expands. We're going to talk about what it means to change the channel. We're going to talk about policing your thoughts, what it means to ask, to believe, and to receive. We're going to talk a little bit about abundance, about money blocks. We're going to talk about accountability that breeds responsibility. Um, and I don't know who's heard of the Geigo principle before. What is a rule book for success? We're going to talk a little bit about what is passions and purpose changing your circumstances and how to do that, um, planning your life, what is the difference between a dream versus a vision, um, who you're willing to become, making some exponential changes in your life and um, creating a vision board for yourself. So a lot of things, a mouthful. So let's get started. So um, Oprah Winfrey says, what you focus on expands. And when you focus on the goodness in your life, you create more of it. So the only thing standing between us and a life filled with joy and everything we want is our very own selves. Because everything that's coming into your life, you're attracting into your life. And it's attracted to you by virtue of the images that you're holding in your mind. Remember, your mind has a reticular activating system. So it's um, focus on what you tell it to focus on. And it sees what you tell it to see. If I said to you right now, close your eyes, and tell me everything that is red in your environment. You could maybe name one or two things. But if you open your eyes and you look around, there would be 20 or more red things. But now when you close your eyes again and I say, okay, now think of those uh, red things. Then you can name a lot more. Um, because you told your mind, this is what I'm looking for. And your mind's going to look for that. Okay, so our job as a human is to hold on to the thoughts of what we want to make it absolutely clear in our minds what we want. So you become what you think about most, but you also attract what you think about most because your brain is going to, it's just going to um, mute whatever you're not focused on. So um, you need to tell your brain what matters, what are my goals. That's why it's so important to keep vision, to keep goals, because you need to keep telling your mind what you're after. What do you want? Um if you can think about what you want in your mind and make that your dominant thoughts, you will bring that into life. Even the Bible says, uh, um, as a man thinketh, so is he. So um, what you think about becomes your reality because you, what you think about affects your emotional state. Your emotional state, again, the CBT cycle, affects the actions that you take in your life. Those actions that you take affect your results and your results affect your circumstances. So um, you are your thoughts in essence. Um, if you want to change anything in your life, it starts with your thought life. And that's why Romans 12 verse 2 says, we need to transform by the renewal of our minds. So um, do you remember when we had uh, remote controls to, or, or when we didn't have remote controls, when you had to go to the TV and your father said, put it on channel two. And you had to go and walk there and, and turn the dial to change the channel. Um, now our thoughts and our feelings work the same way as that old TV um, that you see there in the picture. 
Um, your thoughts determine how we how you feel. So if you don't like like the way that you feel, like let's say like Henrietta is saying this week, she's feeling frustrated, she's feeling depressed, she's feeling whatever this feeling she is, change the channel. You're on the wrong channel. <laughs> you need to flip that script. And now she said to herself, that's nonsense. Well, how am how am I how am I projecting myself and what is on my billboard? I don't want that on my billboard. I want something different. Now she's changing the channel and immediately the feelings start changing. She's not feeling so frustrated anymore. She feels more empowered. She feels in control. She feels like she can make a difference in her circumstances. So um, you can begin right now to say, I want to feel happy. And you can say, I want to feel like I live in abundance to Tell yourself all the time, I don't have this and I don't have that and I don't have this and my life is so bad and I'm feeling sorry for myself. That is bad thoughts. That is bad frequencies that we're sending out. It's the wrong channel. We need to turn that dial back to the right channel. We need to think, even the Bible says, keep your mind on the things that are beautiful, that are lofty, that are um spiritual the things from above don't dwell on the problems and the frustrations and the worries and the sad and the bad and the no we have to keep our minds pure and keep thinking of the good things and what can happen and the possibilities and our vision and our dreams and our goals and then you will be starting to change that that feelings in yourself so you can start feeling loved so if i always say I am not lovable, I'm not lovable, I'm not lovable, then um, I'm going to act like I'm not lovable. I'm not going to take care of myself physically because I feel like I'm not lovable. I'm not going to do, um, I'm not going to even try to develop a relationship with the people around me because I feel like they're going to reject me anyway. So, but if I change that channel, if I change that thought of I'm unlovable to I'm a lovable person because Jesus laid down his life for me. So that must mean, that I'm lovable because Jesus loves me. And if Jesus loves me, then I'm a lovable person because I'm made in the image of Christ. So, and that's the way we need to arrest those thoughts. We need to take, take captive every thought because the enemy uses our thoughts to bring us down because he knows when he brings us down, our feelings are bad and we are not operating in our full capacity and we are um, muted and we are depressed and we are de debilitated. So we cannot step into our calling. We cannot step into our authority as Christians. We cannot affect the kingdom. And then he wants that. So he, what, what does he attack? He, attack? he attacks our thought life. And if we don't keep those gates because i've heard I've, I've listened to a training from jean Nell, and he talks about the eye gates the ear gates and the mouth gates so he just talks about its gates so are you protecting what's coming into your ears are you protecting what you're seeing are you protecting what's coming in and out of your mouth in terms of what are what are your words what what is the things that you're hearing what are you seeing are you looking at things like pornography and and movies that uh, portray violence and whatever else are you listening to music that has curse words that are talking about um there's a catchy song of um someone that's um i can't think of it right now but there's a catchy song but in the song she's talking about wanting to hurt herself and you can catch yourself singing that song over and over again because it's a catchy tune um but if you really think about it, it's toxic. Why are we listening to things like that? We need to be very mindful of what we're letting into these gates of our mind um, because it affects our circumstances at the end of the day. So um, make a list of the things that you can do to change your channel in a snap. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Just We just need two minutes to set our mind on something different. So, by, uh, um, for instance, thinking about a beautiful memory. Have a have a mental list of beautiful memories you can go back to. So, let's say Henrietta is sitting on the couch and she's feeling sorry for herself because her grandson is now born two weeks ago and she can't hold him. And now she's feeling sad and she's feeling like she's missing out on, on that little one and whatever. What, she, what can she focus on instead? She can instead focus on the memory of 
holding her other grandchildren, for instance, when they were little, or um, think about the memory of the visit that she's visited her son in the um, in Belgium um, not so long ago. You know, thinking about a positive memory that really warms up your heart and um, just it blocks out the enemy because the enemy is coming with that I'm not good enough or or whatever you're missing out in life or whatever you're you're not whatever and you're just counteracting with things that that makes you feel good um some future events you're looking forward to let's say you've got a a function that you're getting ready for that's in the future that you're excited about or thinking about some funny moments that happened recently maybe um your spouse stubbed his toe on the on the bed and it was a funny moment and you laughed about it. Or the dog dragged in a mouse and put it on your bed and thought it was like a, a gift for you or whatever. You know, just think about some funny things that has happened recently that makes you laugh, that makes you feel joyful. Go take a walk in nature. Even just going outside and watering your garden is a, is a very therapeutic way of just changing the channel a little bit. Um talking to people that you love, calling up someone, putting on your favorite song in your earphones, just doing a quick dance there. If you feel like you're uh, depressed today, put some worship music on. There's nothing like worship music to get you out of that feeling of depression because the Bible says, uh, put on the garment of praise for the, sp for the spirit of heaviness. And it means worship me. Go and praise and worship. So let it go. Change the channel. Turn it off. Unsubscribe to the negative things. Unfriend. Unfollow. You know, these WhatsApp groups that you're on that's just pouring negative, toxic things into your mind all the time. How terrible life is. All the world events. Yes, we all live in this world. But be careful. Be careful of what you're letting into your mind because it's toxic. Mute. Block. Walk away. Breathe. Your mind is a garden. All right. Policing our thoughts by minding our feelings. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi says, keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts becomes your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior becomes your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits becomes your values. And we can reverse engineer that. What is my values? What is my habits? What is my behavior? What is my words? Um, but keep your values positive because your values becomes your destiny. What you do, your values, is reflected in your daily routine. What you do in your daily routine determines where that um, the, the plane's nose is going to end up. Where is the destination? So your values, your daily routine turns that plane even if it's a fraction, you end up way different, in a way different place um, than you started out, just because you are minding your daily routine, minding uh, um, living according to your values. Okay, so here's the problem. Most people are thinking about what they don't want, and they're wondering why it shows up over and over again in their life. Worry financial lack i was just complaining to my mom just before we started this life about you know making ends meet and everything we need to do um but stop complaining about what you don't have and start looking at what you do have and how you can have more of that um start thinking and speaking about what you do want because tell your brain program your brain to go and look for the things that you want make your last thoughts before you sleep good thoughts have you ever watched like um a thriller or something like that or some disturbing something you know scene and then you have nightmares about this very same thing just because you watched it just before bed um you program your mind at night so rather go through a list of your most top 10 goals at night just before you sleep or say a prayer or read some bible to affect your thought life when you sleep when my children come to me and they say to me mommy i've had a nightmare i ask them what have you done just before bed? What have you watched? What have you seen that is making your brain show you these images? Because we're not careful what our children and, and what we see. And then we want to know where is this coming from? Why are we having all these nightmares? Why are my children screaming at night from night terrors? Because their eye gates and their ear gates aren't protected. 
you're letting it open you're you're inviting the roar the lion the bible says he's like a lion he lion he lies and waits in front of the door he lion waits for that opportunity for you to leave the gate open so make your last thoughts before you sleep good thoughts if you're listening to someone else complain and you're focusing on that. Let's say you've got a friend that comes and sits. And every time she's drinking coffee with you, it's just negative, 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 toxic, toxic, toxic. This person, that person, Skinner, uh, talking about other people, breaking herself down, breaking her husband down, breaking her whatever down. Um, and you are sitting there and you're focusing on that and you sympathize with her and you agree with that. In that moment, you are actually attracting more of those situations to yourself. Because your brain is starting to think it's normal to be in the state of complaining, of the state of victimhood, of the state of blaming other people, of, of um, talking behind people's backs. And, you, and you're telling yourself that this is normal. This is not normal. You will not do that if Jesus was sitting there listening in into the conversation. You wouldn't have done that. Okay, so one way to master our mind is to get our daily bread. So um, meditating on some Bible verses in the morning and praying to God, developing that relationship with our Savior, um, quiets our mind. It helps us to control our thoughts and revitalizes our body. And I've heard a beautiful analogy. I can't remember if I shared it with you last week. Um, the Bible says, um, come near to me and I will come near to you. So um, someone else said it's like a it's like a mountain and you're on this side of the mountain and, and God's on the other side of the mountain. And the more time you spend with God, the nearer he comes to you. So the nearer that you come to him, the nearer he comes to you. And he's a God, a hidden God, and he will reveal himself to you when you spend time with him, when you develop a relationship with him. He's developing it with you. He is revealing more of himself to you. He's revealing more of his purposes for your life to you so it's so important for us to get that mentorship uh you know from god and ask god you know lord align my values align my thoughts my actions lord with what you want for my life for for your purposes for your kingdom um advancement not for my own um align my will um my emotions with uh, give me the the mind of christ so we need to have the mind of Christ. And, and, and 1 Corinthians 2 talks about that. So you want to become aware of how you're feeling. And you want to get in tune with how you're feeling. Because it's the fastest way for you to know what you're thinking. So whenever you're catching yourself being sad all the time, being depressed, uh, feeling like you're not good enough, feeling like you're missing out, all those things. Go and ask yourself, what's the thought running in my head? What is Satan putting in my mind right now? What do I need to guard? What do I need to remove? What is that little um, weed that's growing in my mind right now? I need to pull it out right now and I need to find a Bible verse to replace it. A Bible verse that, that counter acts or counter and I need to plant a good seed there instead of letting that little weed grow and fester in my mental garden. So you want to become aware of how you're feeling and get in tune with how you're feeling because that is how you'll know what you're thinking um and and the best way to do that is to ask yourself many times uh, throughout the day and and what you can do is you can just write it on a little piece of paper and just write 10 10 of them and just go and stick it at your doorposts uh, all the all the uh, through through you know all the what do you call it in english i don't even know just do that for a week just every time you walk through a door just ask yourself how am i feeling right now and just say, I feel sad, I feel angry, I feel tired, I feel mad, I feel exhilarated, I feel whatever. And, and just start becoming aware of how you're feeling. Especially if you're someone that's predominantly someone that, that that's a thinker, that doesn't talk about your feelings, that doesn't um that that doesn't feel that much. Um people who are more hot people can say, I feel this, I feel that. A, a person that's more head oriented say, I think. I think this and I think that. And I definitely am more head. I thought I was a heart, but I'm, the more I get to know myself, the more I know I'm a head person. But um, ask yourself many times throughout the day, how am I feeling? What is this emotion? So that you can come become aware of your emotional um, 
you know, your emotional well-being and, and then ask yourself, what is the thought attached to this? What am I thinking right now? What is this? And dissect it. Henrietta, do you want to talk about um, the difference the CBT thought record has made in your life? Because the, uh, the thought record mainly basically does this. It's just writing out in a, in a journal format, you know, what am I feeling? What are my thoughts? What is the circumstances? What is the background of it? Blah, 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 blah. It just takes you through a process. The main CBT um, change I've, I've had is with my, my parents didn't want me to go to an old school. Um, it wasn't, it was out of town, so I had to go to a boarding school to attend that. And they didn't want me to allow me that. And they also tertiary uh, was uh, or, um, university studying that and uh, support me for that in art. So, and my whole life I was angry about that. It held me back. And um, I also always think if it wasn't for that, I was will be advanced more than I was at that stage. And and then we do the CBT cycle. And then I realized that that saved me from the world and, and the world made things um, and made me more authentic. And um, I'm not influenced by other people in art um, wrongly. So I, I will think, I think, I will think it through. If I see something, if I learn something, and I will think it through, and I will be very careful what I'm putting into my art and what I'm projecting, and mm -hmm. so, and that changed me, and that <laughs> um, make me uh, understand my parents better, and to make to forgive them for that, yeah, um, and and be glad about that at this stage of my life, and now I I. Self, I'm a self-taught artist, but I know a lot. I've studied hard, didn't attend university, and later on when I could, I, I stopped it after a year. And I didn't want to do that. Yeah. I didn't want to go to university because of the influence. Yeah. And this whole thought pattern that you've developed now, that, that, uh, that was a perspective shift for you, how did the feeling show up in your life as a first symptom? So if if you had to describe to me, um, Yona, this was the feelings that, that was in my daily life, and I didn't realize that it had to do with this whole thing. Um, what, what would you say those feelings were? Well, I was, uh, if I think back, and I'm, I was angry, angry, and it was, and um, while well, I was broken about that, it was terrible. If I think of, of my parents and I go through that and I, I love them dearly, but the thought of them not want me to study that and set me back for years, um, I was really upset about that. And if I think about that, I was, I will start crying. I will start getting upset and and it goes further and i'm working and i'm thinking about that and it's it's like a spiral it's taking me down it's getting me sitting me back a few days uh, in depression so so yeah, it's a, it, that cycle. yeah and that changed and that change mm -hmm. by changing and, and, the thought yes and after that, um, I'm not thinking about, I'm thinking, I'm studying myself, I'm working, um, I, I pursue my art, I'm looking into other ways to do it, I, uh, better ways, um, cheaper ways, um, looking at finances and doing things that other people don't do. And I'm not, like I'm, I'm painting on, on boards that I made myself and, and sprayed with the spray uh, paint. And uh, most people don't know, don't know that to use that. And that it's, it lifts your, 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 the, the light out of your painting, the brightness. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a lot of that, I, that I've learned through years, this years of not attending art school that said, you must do it like this. Mm -hmm. You must do it like that. 
-hmm. So I've studied all the ways, looking into all the, because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then getting onto this. And and what's wonderful is that um, that the, the online um, it, and Google and stuff, it's really better than a university. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, they change so quickly the 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 well the courses the what's your, the yeah the, know, information. the, yeah. Yeah. the information the information change so quickly that like you people can't um stay with it it's, yeah. it's too much yeah asking the time it takes for a university to create a course like so yes. long by the time that they actually present it and it's through all the processes and the approvals and stuff it's outdated information because you can find more uh, up-to-date information on google yes and i love G chat gpt it helps me a lot really mm -hmm. things that i'm not sure about like this boards spread with a uh, uh, rustolian paint um if i think on that um, and I asked ChatGPT what he what he thinks or she thinks about that, and he gives me all the back the the, the information. Yeah. And um, it saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of time, and it, it gives me um, a, a point from where I can work on and do my studies further on that. And until I'm certain that's a archival way to paint and make sure it's it's right. Yeah, yeah, awesome. It all comes from the, the the change of the of my thinking. Yeah, yeah. Because now you're thinking of new possibilities and of yes. potential. Where previously you were just angry and resentful and 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 feeling like you've missed out and and you've been shortchanged. Instead, now you're seeing it as an advantage, as a silver lining. Where previously you yes. said it, you saw it as this dark cloud over your life, um, and that's just the way the devil tries to steal from us and it steals our joy and it steals our purpose in life because now you're starting to activate into your purpose which for years has been locked because of a stronghold in your mind a principle because a stronghold um, is nothing more than a principality a principality is a principle it's a principle it's a thought that is toxic that is holding you back so when we um, take control of our thought mind when we replace negative thinking by positive thinking and we transform by the renewal of our minds that's when we were starting to walk into the purpose that god has for our life all along that he had planned for us all along but we are living in that toxic environment and we're not allowing the flowers of the seeds that god has planted in us to grow and it's our own fault because we're allowing the devil to take territory in all and I'm so angry, so angry with myself mm. for letting that happen. And while well, I'm I'm in my sixties, and really it set me back for so many years. And mm. with the CBT cycle that we do, yeah, um, it changed my life. And and yeah, and now I can go on and and I can study and study and study, and I loved it. Mm. Um, and I grow quickly, very quickly yeah. now. Exactly. Because there's a lot that they can see. That. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> love, love Google for, as a university, not yeah. a yeah. specific university. Exactly. Been, yeah. or, or a mentor. mentor. I can choose my mentors. I can look at a mentor and say, uh -uh, I don't like this, uh, this guy. I don't feel... I don't connect with him and I don't like what he's saying and I don't know the ways he's doing it. He's, yeah, well. Yeah. And I love what you just said, um, is the variety that's available right now just because of the information age um, mm -hmm. makes it possible that you can really choose someone that you connect with that uh, mm -hmm. uses the methods you, that you like. And that's why it's so awesome and why there's such an opportunity to be a coach in this day and age. Because even though you might think you're not the greatest at this specific thing in the world, there's someone in the world that's not connecting with that great person that are, is looking for someone like you to connect with because mm -hmm. you're the person that's going to be transferring that knowledge. Let's say Henrietta. Um, Henrietta is Afrikaans. So there's an Afrikaans lady thinking, what 
somebody please just make this course in Afrikaans. I don't understand this English. Um, and their Henrietta will win um, over someone that's been in the industry for years and years and years because she's naturally, she's born Afrikaans and she's got that natural skill to to communicate in Afrikaans where someone else doesn't have that. Um, and so you will have unique skills, gifts and abilities that God has given you throughout your lifetime, throughout your adversities, throughout the things you've worked through, throughout what you've experienced. And that is what what is valuable. I just came off a... Uh, of a, a coaching call with a potential client and what I also said to her is if I had to send you into a room and I said to you um, go and write down the 12 tools or the 12 situations in life that happened to you that changed your life that really remember that game we had minesweeper i can't i don't know if everybody knows that but in on the old pcs we had the minesweeper and it was like radar blocks and if you click on it then some blocks might come open but if you click on the wrong one there's a bomb so i always think of it like this this minesweeper where it opens up these blocks so what are some of the things that that has happened in your life when you clicked on it it opened up a whole new world for you and go and think about what are 12 let's say 12 12 lessons or 12 things that happened to you in your life that changed the way you think that changed the way you do things and that is the things that are valuable that is the stuff people are willing to pay for information is available freely online. People are not looking for that. They're looking to multiply their life by your experience, by the stuff you went through, by the life knowledge that you have. That is what you're selling, not information. Information is freely available. So go and think about that. Yeah, I was thinking about the courses that I want to do, and I was thinking, well, there's so many good artists why uh, why must I uh, uh, give uh, uh, a course? Yeah. Because there's so many on, on internet. Because there's some people that are really so just going to resonate with you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, ask, believe, and receive. So this is a biblical principle. Um, it is... <laughs> Uh, Mark eleven twenty four. If I read that correctly, um, and, and Mark eleven twenty four says, "Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, and it will come to pass." And Matthew twenty one twenty two says, "And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith." Um, so the quote that's that I put there says, "Your life is as good as your mindset." Um, and I always ask my clients, "Do you really believe in the Bible?" <laughs> because if you really believe in the bible you should believe in these two verses that says if you ask and you believe you will receive it but we are so used to all these toxic thoughts and all these things that are holding us back that that god has actually given us the keys to the principle the, the keys to the kingdom but we we're saying oh no i don't think this key is going to turn it this key is not going to unlock the abundance i'm no can't be can't be and he says in the Bible, when you ask, I'm not a father who will give you a snake when you ask for a bread. If you ask, if it's in his will for you to have that, for you to use that in the kingdom, why would he not grant you that? So step number one is asking. And it comes down to setting your goals and really priming your mind for what you really want. So what do you really want? Do you do you have that list? Sit down and write it out on a piece of paper because writing it um, activates your muscle memory as well. So write it and write it in the present tense. I am a brilliant artist that gives uh, online courses to young students who had who who have not had the opportunity to attend tertiary um, arts education. I you know write out that stuff and and start. Um, deciding on what do you really want and talk to God about what you want and, and just ask the Holy Spirit to align these things to what his will for your life is. Um, and then start believing that it is already yours. Because again, what is yours will be yours. And, and God hasn't given you all these talents and gifts for you to go and bury it underneath your bed. 
No, he said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So shine your light. Why did God give you those talents? For you, just for your enjoyment. No, he's given it to you. He said, you're a city on a hill. Meaning that I've given you this, this authority over this kingdom, over this hill. You're the king of this hill. And I want you to shine for me. Like Henry Lisa said in the beginning, God's light needs to reflect through you. And if you're not using your talents and skills um, and asking God to partner with you in this journey of um, doing what he's made you to do, what he's equipped and and shaped you to do, he's shaped you into a vessel. Do you think he just wants that vessel to go the dust on the shelf? No, he wants to use the vessel. And you need to be that vessel. You need to say, Lord, pour it in. I'm ready. Give it to me. Shape me the way you want me. Use me the way you want me. Okay. Have unwavering faith. Believe in the unseen. Have faith that God wants the best for you. Because he is a good father that wants good gifts. for, And he gives good. The Bible says he gives good gifts for those who love him. And then receive, begin to feel wonderful about it because we have a father that gives us what we need. Um, feel the way that you will feel once it arrives. So let's say Henrietta is envisioning this course now that she wants to create. Henrietta, go and think about what would it make you feel if you've got a fully developed one-year course that teaches young artists what you haven't learned when you, you know, that took you 40 years to learn. What could you teach them in a year? What is that 12 lessons that really can make a difference in their lives that they would say after a year of working with you, my goodness, why haven't I found you earlier? This has changed my life. And that's what we want. We want to change people. We want to be change agents. That's what we're called to be, change agents for, for the Lord, to activate people in the kingdom. Because there's a lot of people walking around with all these giftings, but they end up in the graveyard. Their dreams die with them. Their um, their their uh, capabilities and possibilities, what God has created them for, they're not using it. They're u- letting the toxic thoughts, you know, cloud their mind. So they never get to the destiny they were supposed to get to, because they they're living in in defeat. They're not living in victory. Believing that God has beautiful. Uh, um, places uh, measured out for them um somewhere in the bible it talks about um you know you've measured a good portion for me lord and and it's beautiful to me you know it makes you want to cry um but we all have a beautiful portion measured out for us and we play small because we're letting the devil steal territory in our domain um so when you start feeling the, the way you want to feel when you reach that destination, when you've created that product, when you've created that service, when you are operating fully in your gifting, how would that make you feel? So now start taking actions. So do you see what we're doing? We are we are mimicking the feeling in the in the CBT cycle so that we can go over into action. Although we might not be feeling it really at the moment, we're thinking the thought. We're mimicking the feeling and we're starting to take the action because what happens when you take action? Action breeds clarity. Action starts getting you into that feeling. And before you know it, that results shows up in your life. And then you can really feel that. You can really feel joy and you can really feel like you've, you're accomplished and, and, and that you're confident because now your results and your circumstances start showing what you've been thinking about. So it's this whole CBT cycle. But remember, if you if you want something different, you have to change the thoughts, the feelings, and the actions. And if you have to mimic it in the beginning, do that. But start thinking about what, what would that look and feel like. And ask the Holy Spirit again. Ask the Holy Spirit to align your thoughts, your heart, your mind um, with God so that you can unlock that abundance. Uh, if you read 1 Corinthians 2, it talks about when you're in alignment, then his blessings over your life is unlocked. And I don't want you to think about money. It is not about money. Abundance doesn't mean money. Abundance means joy, the joy of the Lord, peace of the Lord, abundance of the Holy Spirit in your life. That is abundance. Money is just a tool. 
we all just we all look story eyed if we 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 think about money but money is just a tool and we think money is the be all and end all no you get people that are billionaires that are deathly depressed why they've got everything going for them they can buy anything in the world they can have any experience they want why are why are they still depressed because that's not what abundance is abundance is the peace and the joy of the Lord and the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you. That's abundance. All right. And now the slides about abundance. <laughs> okay. Um, if you want to set a goal that is so big that if you achieved it, it will blow your mind. So let's say, Henrietta, if we talk about yours, what about we say something like, uh, a year from now, I have 12 paying students in my fully developed one-year course and it has changed our financial life. It's changed my whole circumstances. Um, I get to change people's lives one by one. So daily go and close your eyes and visualize those goals if it's, as if it's already achieved. And, and think about it like, like you're doing a painting, Henrietta. Before you start painting, you have to have the end in mind. You have to say, what do I want to see on this canvas? And now you start drawing the lines and you start painting dark spots and light spots. And, and when someone else looks at that painting, they're like, what do you think you're doing? And it's like, don't worry, I'm busy. You know, what people looked at my life. People looked at my life in the beginning and they said, she's a jack of all trades, but master of none. What the, what is she doing? You know what? I've got a plan and I've got a vision. And even though you're standing there and you're not seeing it, I know. The Lord and I, we're busy. We're busy creating a thing here. And I need this skill and I need this skill and I need this skill. And to you, it might be looking like this girl is just course hopping and she's not doing really anything substantial with her life. You know what? God and I, we, we've created our own university for my purposes um, and the purposes that God has created for me and my domain and my kingdom and my little mountain that he's given me. And I'm taking authority of my little mountain and I'm going to be the queen of my mountain um, and I'm going to reflect his glory through my lighthouse that I'm building on my mountain. So um, it might look to other people, to onlookers, that what are you painting in data? What are you doing? Why are you now wanting to do courses? What's going on with this now? Blah, 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 blah. And people will judge and people will say things. But you know what? As long as you and God are in a cohort and, and you're, you know, you're on the same page, then it doesn't matter what people think. I think when people walked over to Noah, who was building the ark, he was, they were saying he's lost his mind. He's lost his mind. But you know what? He and God was on the same page. And that was all that was needed because God gave him the vision. And he just had to say, well, even though it doesn't make sense to me, Lord, I'm doing what you say because that's the vision. And if God gave you that vision, then he will provide for that vision to come into. I mean, when 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 Noah had that that's uh, to build the ark, I, I I'm thinking by myself, how did he worry about how he's going to get all the animals in it? How did he think he was going to make that happen? And you know what? He didn't need to worry about it because God made the animals come in two by two. But how many sleepless nights do you think Noah had about that conundrum and that problem, thinking about how am I going to do this, <laughs> Lord? And we forget that we that we serve a God of the impossible, and He can do He can do things that we can't even fathom. We can't even think about that as a, as a possibility. And then He makes it happen. So He is the God of abundance. He's the God of possibility. He's the God of impossible. So don't worry about that. Just make sure that you're on the same page. That you're spending time with God. That you're you know, that you're walking this road with him. And then you just need to see the next step. You don't need to see what the whole staircase looks like. You just say, okay, Lord, what is my marching orders for today? All right, we're doing this. Even though I think it's crazy and everyone around me think it's crazy. You said it, I'll do it. And that's it. So John 10, 10 says, uh, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full. So it overflows. Again, I ask you, do you believe in the Bible? Because there the Bible says he wants abundance for us. 
All right. If you think more thoughts of abundance than of lack, you will dip that scale because you're going to end all those negative thinking. That's Those negative thinking is blocking. It's blocking your creative juices. If the words, I can't afford it, have passed your lips, your power to change that is now. Change it with, instead of saying, I can't afford it, say, I can afford it. I can, but how can I afford it? So if the Lord says, okay, um, if he places it on your heart to do this mission trip, um, like my daughter, she's got this desire on her heart to to do a life team with the church. And it's only happening, um, I think it's going to be the year after next year. But it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. And I can't afford to do that for her at this stage. So I say to her, if God places it on your heart and it's something he wants you to do, pray about it. And if it is in his will, he will provide for you to do that in time, in good time, in his perfect timing. If it's not in his will, then it won't happen. He will close the doors. But if it is to be, and he is placing it on your heart, he will open that doors for you. You don't even need to worry about it then, because it will happen. And the same way, um, I think two years ago, we bought, there was a property that we um, wanted to buy, and my mom just said, well, just believe, believe. And we didn't have the right income to afford that property. And we just prayed about it as a family. And yeah, we believed. <laughs> we believed for that, for that property. And we got the property at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, believe. Believe that, that he's a good God that gives good gifts to his children. Um. Start to say and feel, I have more than enough. Instead of saying, I'm missing out. I don't have enough. I, you know, because that's a poverty mindset. Start looking from today, start looking, what do I have in my life? What do I have abundance of in my life that other people would wish to have? Because there's always someone that has less than you have. There's always someone that's looking at your life that's saying, oh my goodness, if I only can get there. And you're sitting and you're moping about your life. There are people who don't have running water. There are people who don't have food in their cupboards. There are people who don't even have a warm thing to wear tonight. There are people that doesn't have a pillow to lay their heads. And we are sitting and complaining about our cushy lives. You know, we've got a roof over our heads. We've got money to pay the bills. We've got... Um, internet, we're sitting here watching a training on internet. You know, there's someone else that doesn't even know where they're going to get food for tomorrow. So stop saying that I don't have, I, I'm, I'm a have not, I'm, I'm broke, I'm this, I'm that. And, and start seeing the abundance in your life. Start seeing how much you're blessed and stop seeing the scarcity. I don't think we're going to get through all of these slides. I think I better put them in the next um, in the next session because we've been already been going for an hour. So let me just skip down to the bottom. Um, and I'm going to ask you to do a visualization. So if this visualization is just um, it's just playful. And I want you to play with this and lay down your hair. And, and even if it's ridiculous... Nobody's going to listen to it. You're the only one that's going to listen to it. Okay. Send yourself a voice note on WhatsApp or record it on your phone. And then um, just let your mind brainstorm. Even if it's ridiculous, uh, nothing is too ridiculous. Nothing is too lofty. I want you to exaggerate and overshoot. So don't just say, I want a, a red car. I want a red Ferrari. That's, you know, just exaggerate on it because I want your mind to expand a little and dream more than what's possible um, or what you think is possible. So uh, you're going to give me an imaginary call. So don't send me the voice note. It's for you privately to do this. But um, you're going to imaginary call me three years into the future of doing some work with me. Let's say you've done this uh, course with me um, and you begin the conversation with, oh my goodness, Yana, and you will not believe what happened to me in the last three years. And, and you tell me what's going to happen 
let's say uh, now 2023. So if this phone call is from 2026 and you're phoning me and you're saying, you will not believe what happened to me in these three years, this and this, and then I did this and, and, and that happened and I got this and we went there and we saw that and, and this and this and this and this. So leave nothing out, do it in full color. Your wildest dreams came true in these three years. Forget about what is possible and just dream. And then just record that, record that voice note and um, then listen back to it and say, ask yourself, how will you know that you've got what you've wanted? What will you see? What will you hear? What will you feel? And what is that super secret dream that nobody really knows about that you want to accomplish? Um, and, and it's private. I mean, you don't have to share that on the group or anything, but go and do that exercise because I think a few interesting things will come out in that voice note. Go and sit somewhere on a mountain and do that exercise for yourself and see what you come up with. All right. And then ask yourself, um, tell me how this imaginary coaching work, let's say the work we've done tonight, um, has changed your life. So how has the information, the finding yourself again information, for instance, changed your life? And what were the key realizations that you got in year to finally reach your ultimate dream? What was those keys that turned in your head that made you make a significant change, that made you make a transformation? Because these keys are going to become your roadmap. Okay, so turn those keys now into that roadmap and say, what steps do I need to now take to make this vision a reality? To start getting into that. All right. Any questions, Henrietta? Mm, no. <laughs> Any feedback or uh, main takeaways that you want to share? Uh, um, yeah, I have to still work harder and deeper and go through all this re and, and listen to the replay and work through everything. And, and that will make everything more clear to me and my goals um to really set up my goals and and uh work from that backwards like but reverse in your yeah the three years but yeah more or less ten years and then the three years and then a year and then six months and and so on mm -hmm. reverse engineering everything yeah. Um, and 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 see what I can do and look at my my thoughts, especially my thoughts about anything. Mm -hmm. That's very really important. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so um, remember to put uh, little cards for yourself on every door to remind yourself to ask yourself, "What am I feeling right now?" And just investigate. Just asking you to become aware. Investigate, what am I thinking right now? What is this feeling and what am I thinking to create this feeling that I'm feeling right now? All right. So um, I just want to say a prayer for us tonight. Uh, and I'm going to read off my notes here that I've made because um, I feel like this is a message that God has been giving me over the past week or so. And I feel it's really important that we just be mindful of this. So um, Lord Jesus, we pray for each and every woman listening in tonight and each and every woman on the Unstoppable Faith in Her Tribe and each and every woman that's called for business and called for ministry, Lord. Um, we ask that you will help us to close the gates of our eyes, of our ears, of our mouth, Lord, so that we watch what we say, we watch what we look at, what we hear, Lord, what we feed into our minds, um, and, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us to secure those gates. Because you say in the Bible that the devil prowls like a roaring lion and he's waiting at the door. He's waiting for us um, to leave that gate open, to leave that door open so that he can enter and, and so that he can seal, kill and destroy what you have given to us. Lord, I pray that you will help us to understand the kingdom principles, because if we are citizens of the kingdom, Lord, we need to understand the, the pr principles and we need to understand how things work in your kingdom. So I pray for revelation for each and every woman um, that I'm praying for tonight to learn about the kingdom and learn about your kingdom principles. I pray, Lord, that 
each and every woman might feel the necessity to spend time with you throughout the day, to really get mentored by you, to really um, develop this relationship with you so that we can come to know you more. Because when we come to know you, we will know more what your will for our lives is, what, what you want us to do. Um, and thank you, Lord, that you provide for us, that you are Jehovah Jireh, the, the God who provides. Thank you, Lord, that if you place the vision in our hearts and in our mind, that if we're aligned to your will, that you will provide for that vision, that you will bring it to pass, that you will shape us with our circumstances, with things that happen, with people that you bring on our path, Lord, to make the vision a reality. Um, I thank you, Lord, now that the hidden season is over and that you're launching us. And I ask that you forgive. Uh, I, I ask that you help us to forgive and bless the people that have hurt us along this journey. And I'm thinking about the journey that Joseph had to take, Lord, where he had this dream and vision that you give that you gave him, but his family went and threw him in a pit. Lord, and many of us has this dream and vision that you gave us, but there are people very close to us that are throwing us into the pit. Lord, and I'm just praying that like Joseph, Lord, when you pull us out of that pit, um, when you establish us in our authority, when we become this um, person that's in charge of a kingdom, of a, of a, of a territory, and of a domain, Lord, that you place us in, in that kingship, that, Lord, that we might forgive the people that has put us in that pit, just like Joseph had to forgive his brothers and forgive his family for for the things they've done to him, so that we might turn around and be a blessing of a provision to the people that has actually put us in the pit. And I, I know, Lord, that it's counterculture to what we believe, you know, as humans think that, you know, we want to take revenge and we want to, you know, hurt people that hurt us, but you teach us that this is not the way the kingdom principles work, Lord. So help us to have a soft heart and to be forgiving as Joseph had to forgive his brothers, Lord. And thank you that you're showing me that we need to come away with you in a, in this season of rest that's coming up through the December holidays and especially in my life as well, Lord. And I pray that each and every woman that's listening in here tonight um, might have a season of rest where they can come away with you, Lord, and they can be refreshed and you get a fresh anointing from you. Um, Lord, the Bible says hope deferred um, is a terrible thing um, versus a dream that is fulfilled. Lord, and I pray for each and every woman here that our dreams will be fulfilled lord that our hope will not be deferred um lord i want you to send me people whose hearts are already prepared lord and and for each and every one of us in our calling send us the clients that you have already prepared to be in our vicinity the people that are already prepared to to come into alignment with us that are coming into partnership with us lord so that we can further the kingdom um, and I'm asking all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay, ladies. So we'll see each other next time, same time, same place. Um, and for those of you that has tuned in a bit late uh, and and um, maybe thought, where is Yana and what's going on? Yana has been um, attending a 30-day challenge and, and sometimes the trainings has run a bit late and I had a meeting that ran a bit late tonight. So um, if you try to tune in and I wasn't available at, uh, at eight on the dots, um, I do apologize. And that's probably going to be a bit, I'm probably going to be a bit late for the rest of this month until that 30 day challenge finishes. But it's also important work that I need to be doing. And it's important work that I want to be sharing with you guys. So it's important for me to invest and infuse my mind constantly with the things that really is going to help and affect uh, transformation in the people that I serve so I thank you Andrea, for being here with me tonight and for sharing your thoughts for sharing um, you know your introspection with us and I trust that it's going to bless people that are listening and that you have a fantastic week going ahead and a fantastic weekend and we'll see each other next week good night bye-bye <laughs>